The Poison Warlock has seen massive improvements in under a week's time from the latest update video for this build. By swapping two skills into the mix, Profane Veil and Wandering Spirits, which was recently updated, we can scale the damage to new heights and increase our survivability at the same time. The build retains its amazingly fluid gameplay style as well. Even though we've dropped Transplant our Mobility or Traversal skill, we can maintain the ability to dash to safety or simply for speed by converting Fisher into a Traversal skill. This version puts the previous two versions to shame, and a huge thank you to Crate for sharing some test results and providing a build link for others in the community so that they may use these improvements prior to the updated video. So let's begin by talking about the skills that have remained within the build, Orb of Decay, Spirit Plague, and also Fisher. Fisher, as mentioned, will now be our traversal skill, and we can do this by changing the talent tree or the skill tree that we're using for the skill. You may also notice that we've eliminated the nodes involving Chaos Bolts. Chaos Bolts was a huge drain on our mana, and with the new setup of this build, we basically have no problems with mana whatsoever. That makes it easier to gear, gives it better output, and overall better survivability. There's really no negative to this setup. Aura of Decay largely remains the same as well. There are a few tweaks, and I'll leave the info for that as always, where you can find it in the video description. However, we're still going to keep this skill up 100% of the time. You will activate Orb of Decay when you begin playing or after a death and just keep it up all the time. You can easily offset the negatives for additional damage output. Remember that Orb of Decay also gives you access to getting some benefit from some of the best idols available to this particular setup. You can get things like this where you have increased poison damage while the aura is active and also poison damage on top of that or you could even get some additional necrotic damage and we do have several skills that benefit from that as well. Here's a quick look at the skill tree if you want to pause just for reference or alter your own character without going to the build link. Spirit Plague also remains within the build and basically unaltered at all. We're still going to use the skill as our opener. We're going to apply Spirit Plague on an enemy, just allow it to spread. It does have a chance to spread when you hit enemies that are afflicted by it as well. And overall, this does a large amount of damage and allows us to benefit from additional bonuses we get to cursed enemies. That leaves Wandering Spirits and Profane Veil. As you can see, Wandering Spirits can generate an enormous amount of spirits to deal additional damage to our enemies. And through the talent tree, we can actually convert this to poison. Absolutely perfect. Profane Veil will add a lot of defensive capability to this build. You can channel this and basically make yourself immune to everything other than damage over time. And in addition to that, you can actually cast this on top of those Wandering Spirits and have them deal additional damage. We've also made changes to the passive tree. The most noticeable is Dance with Death. Now this talent deals increased damage and it's tripled when you have below 35% health. We previously used Chaos Bolts, which had the ability to regenerate health and mana on hit. This made it difficult to actually maintain below 35% for the additional tripled effect that you would get from the damage buff. However, by making the changes to the new setup, we can stay reliably at that percentage using a ward setup with our gear. Furthering the benefit of staying at low life is Hollowed Lich. This is going to allow us to transform Health Leech into increased damage, and we can pull this from all different areas. It doesn't matter where it comes from. We just get overall increases to damage. I also want to mention that we do have a couple of points into Malefic Body, and this may vary depending on your own character. This node, of course, increases intelligence, but the Vitality is probably the one you may question. There is some benefit to still having Vitality as a stat. Vitality will actually increase your poison and necrotic resistance. Increasing your necrotic resistance allows you to benefit from the helmet that we run with the Bone Clamor Barbet, and increasing your poison resistance allows you to run Aura of Decay, which also decreases your own poison resistance while it's active. This is just a means of offsetting it. Again, depending on your own character, you may or may not need points there to help yourself maintain the cap. So let's slow the gameplay down a little bit just so that you can better understand this build, especially if you haven't seen the first two videos. The glowing aura around our character is Aura of Decay. Now this is also going to apply ailments, more specifically poison to enemies. You can just run around the enemies or groups of them. You'll see that a lot of the enemies will just go down simply from that. We of course want to make the kill speed or clear speed even quicker. Also have the Fissure, which we can use for mobility. Now we can cast that over enemies that will deal even more damage than if it's just to the side of them. So keep that in mind if you're bossing or higher health enemies, make sure that you're using the Fissure over them. And use that to escape dangerous abilities that they're casting your way, or just in general use that to speed your way through the rift. You can see the Fissure on its own. Again, I'd have the Orb of Decay active as well, but that'll certainly take enemies out. And it's had a really short cooldown compared to other traversal abilities. So use that pretty often. In fact, you'll do a lot of damage and just have better clear speed from that. When you combine that with the Spirit Plague as well, you'll see that we can basically get Ambush. We can use our Fisher. We can even cast the Wandering Spirits and we can actually run away from the enemies. Forgive the lag there, but everything will actually die on their way to us because we do so much damage over time. So here's a higher health enemy. The only thing that made it through, get a Spirit Plague on that. We'll put him in the Fisher, And again, we can now finally use our Profane Veil, and that's when the ticks will really add up, and that would be the general strategy for a boss as well. Apologies for the lag. Unfortunately, the servers have not been any better since this morning, but for the most part, you'll be casting your Spirit Plague, jumping forward or jumping at the enemies, and then you get to objectives, 
put your wandering spirits up and you can cast your profane veil and you'll see that we're ticking for larger damage than ever before in fact it's about three or four times more damage than we had in the previous version the dots are largely going to take care of everything although it's not the most exciting thing to see enemies dying off screen or not see them rather however know that they're dying and you may have to backtrack in order to get some of the unique items that may fall after you take those enemies down this is a good example right here so you have to backtrack to even see what your enemy has dropped for you and a lot of people have that being a negative for a build so I do like to mention that because I want to cover both sides of the build but you will often backtrack as shown right there all the dots you just throw up spirit plague as you're moving fisher to travel further you can cast the wandering spirits if you just want to kind of make sure that you're taking everything down or if there's a higher health enemy and again on the objectives you can run and pop your profane veil once you get a couple of dots up and certainly everything will down as soon as possible you can also spam the Spirit Plague as well. This will reduce the cooldowns and allow you to get back into Profane Veil even quicker. Stream of Profanity is the skill node within Profane Veil that will reduce the cooldown every time you cast Spirit Plague. Spirit Plague counts as a curse, so directly casting that will lower this cooldown. Adds to the defensive layers of the build and also dramatically increases the damage output. As of this time, I haven't changed any of the recommended gear, and all of this will be available through the link planner in the video description where you can check it all out. This build basically embodies everything that this channel is about. Not only did I start this build just because there was a lack of poison builds in general for last epoch, but there have been members of the community, not just Crate, that have contributed to improving the build overall. So a huge thank you to all of you for taking the time putting your thoughts together and helping improve this build. If you watch the channel regularly, you'll know that we cover a lot of builds on this particular channel, and they're not always meta builds. They're just builds that are viable, enjoyable, always have a solid gameplay style to them that make it enjoyable and possible of completing the game up to certain extents. Do I think this build is gonna clear 1000 corruption? Fortunately not, but it's more than capable of clearing 300 plus, as you've seen here. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.